talking about website security, the big picture with simple steps to take. A lot of people that think that security is scary, and that is an animated GIF that is not animating. <laughs> scary. Oh, there we go. All right. That's a bearded dragon behind that kitten. <laughs> and it's funny. But maybe it's not scary after all. So there's several different types of attacks that can happen to your site. A brute force attack, attack. Uh, basically somebody's just trying everything they can to crack a password or get into your site by trying every password combination, username, password combination they can think of. SQL injections, cross-site scripting hacks, cross-site request forgeries, file inclusion vulnerabilities, directory traversals, and so many more. Um, a lot of this stuff happens if your form doesn't sanitize this data properly, or if you're not including secure JavaScript. Um, and a lot of this stuff can be mitigated pretty easily, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So here's a few things we're going to talk about to drastically improve your security pretty easily. Choosing a quality host, uh, and we're going to go over all, all this stuff point by point. Use quality and trusted software. Manage your usernames and passwords. Enable two-factor authentication. And then I have a few quick tips. So in choosing a quality host, a lot of what you want to do is ask for advice from other people you trust. There's a lot of inexpensive hosts like Bluehost, um, which is recommended on WordPress.org. So because of that recommendation, we know that it's somewhat trustworthy. SiteGround is another inexpensive host. These, these hosts are like $5 a month, $10 a month hosting packages that you get, and you can host a couple of sites on there. But there's usually shared hosting, which means that your website is on a server with a hundred other websites. Now there have been times in the past where, because of some server mismanagement, one site that's completely unrelated to your site got hacked. But because of the insecurities on the server, that caused every other site on that server to also get hacked. That happened a few years ago with WordPress especially. There was a vulnerability. Um, not specific to WordPress, but to some themes that were including some stuff that Word, WordPress users used. And they were on these hosts that got taken advantage of and infected every site that even those sites were secure. Uh, there's mid-range quality hosts like Pressable, WP Engine. Uh, some of the hosts that are sponsoring this event would fall in that range as well. And then higher end is like Pagely. Um, iThemes actually has a document, there's a bit.ly link here, and my uh, slides are available on the uh, WordCamp website. But that link will, should link you to an ebook that iThemes put, put out about how to choose a quality WordPress host. Choosing quality software. There's some things you should seek and some things you should avoid. Uh, get your software from a trusted source. WordPress.org is considered a trusted source. The plugins aren't necessarily vetted by a third-party developer, but if you look at the ratings and reviews of that plugin, that should help you get an idea of whether or not that's trusted. Also, the download base is a good number to look at. If you're looking for a plugin that does something, and you see three of them on the WordPress.org website, and one of them has one download and one star rating, you might want to avoid that one over one that has a five star rating with 20 or 100 or 10,000 downloads. Uh, back up to the trusted sources. Again, if you ask developers you trust or people you know, Facebook, the, there's a couple of WordPress groups that are really good places to ask questions like this. Find a place that sells premium themes if you're looking for premium themes or even premium plugin developers. Like iThemes, I would think, is a trusted source. We sell themes and plugins. Uh, StudioPress sells themes that you can trust because they have a brand that they're trying to protect and they don't want to put garbage out there. 
And my last point I already uh, discussed was the recommendations from other WordPress users. Um, a recommendation to avoid is tor torrents. Now, torrents aren't necessarily bad, but a lot of people don't want to pay $50 or $100 for a WordPress theme, so they'll go and try to see if it's available for free someplace. And the, one of those places is by downloading a torrent. And sometimes you're going to run into somebody who downloaded that theme, or even bought the theme, injected their own malicious code into it, put it up on a torrent, and now you're infecting your site by installing it. Another place that I would avoid is any site that's selling all the things. Every once in a while, every six months or so, some genius developer says, you know what, I've got access to all the Genesis themes, all the iTheme themes, all the whatever plugins. I'm going to sell these for $5 on my site. And I'm not going to support them. That's going to be on the purchaser to figure out how to get support for it. And unfortunately, with GPL, that's perfectly legal as long as you're not breaking any sort of like trademark stuff. But you can download those themes for really cheap, but it's not really a trusted source. They could inject an ad on your site saying, bought from this site, or malicious code again. So I would avoid those two as major places of getting software. But another thing you need to remember is even quality software can introduce bugs or security holes. WordPress is quality software as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes there's a security hole. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. The good thing about getting your software from trusted sources is that they're going to respond to security complaints. Hopefully they're going to deal with security complaints before they're publicly known. Um, even Microsoft and Google runs into this. They'll have a, a security thing. Usually they're notified, they patch it before they release what that security thing is. Hopefully hackers don't find out what it is before anybody else does though. So one thing you need to do is if there is an update, update it. So WordPress gets an update, update it because there might be a security vulnerability that you're updating for or a plugin or even your theme. An important thing you need to do is manage your usernames and passwords. And this is across the web, all of your usernames and passwords. Don't use the same password on multiple sites. If somebody hacks my iTunes account and I'm using the same password as on my bank account, then that may be a way for them to get access to my bank account. I recommend using password managers like LastPass or 1Password. I personally use LastPass. Uh, you can use it to generate and store very long, random, and unique passwords. And it's really user intuitive. You go to a website, it has a user form, you put in your username, there's a button to generate a password. I recommend at least 16 characters. And you hit submit, it will save it into your LastPass store. It's very secure, it's encrypted, not even LastPass can get access to it. If you forget your LastPass password, then you've lost all your passwords. Sometimes my wife will say, hey, what's your Facebook password? I need to log into your account. And I'll say, I don't know. I'm like, I have to log into my last pass, click on the button to show me my password and say, H capital K, three exclamation mark, E, W, capital Z. And that's great. It's great that you don't know your password. The only password I know is the basic insecure password I use for throw away accounts that I don't care about, and my LastPass password, which is not basic or insecure. It's, in fact, my LastPass password is longer than the passwords that I have generated from LastPass. But there's a lot of people that don't trust password managers because they're afraid that their password's going somewhere that's insecure. Now, with LastPass, I don't know as much about 1Password, but with LastPass, uh, security researcher named Steve Gitson, who I'm going to talk about in a minute here, did a pretty thorough breakdown of how LastPass works and how it, there's like no way LastPass can see your password. Um, but if you don't trust them anyway, Steve Gibson has another method that I uh, have fallen in love with for people who don't trust LastPass. It's called the password haystack method. 
And basically what you do is you come up with a needle and the needle is your base password. So in this example, my needle is dog, D-0-G, with a capital D. And so I'm going to put that in my head. That's my password from now on, D-0-G. Super easy, super insecure, right? Because there's only three characters. But the secret is to put that needle in a haystack of other things you're going to remember. So in this example here, D-O-G followed by uh, 12 periods. That's the haystack. It's going to be impossible for a password cracker to brute force that password because even though it's not random characters, they have no idea what those characters are. Um, unless, of course, you let them know what your haystack is. So a recommendation would be pick a random password that you're going to remember, D0G, and if you go to CNN's website, make your haystack something like CNN-CNN-D0D-CNN-CNN. Nobody will be able to crack that password, but it's super easy to remember. You're at your website. Okay, CNN and a dash. That's my haystack. D0G, that's my secret password that nobody knows. And no one can guess it. So my question for you is which of the following two passwords do you think is stronger or more secure or more difficult to crack? A sign of hands for this 16 character password with DOG. Anyone think this one's secure? Nobody. One person, my maybe. He's thinking I might be tricking people. And then I have this 15 character completely random password. Who thinks this is secure? More secure. Okay. So this is what WordPress tells me. When I put in D0G, it says it's very weak. And when I put in the random characters, it's very strong. But if you can get one quadrillion guesses per second, it would take the top password 1.4 trillion years to guess. And the bottom one, only 1.49 billion years to guess. They're both very secure. But the 16 character password is exponentially more secure. Uh, the reason being that there's 94 characters per um, space, yeah, per character. And basically, because it's 16, it's 94 to the 16th power. That's how many combinations there are for people to guess. Now, the WordPress thing I showed you is testing for uh, uniqueness in characters. They think because you did a bunch of dots, it's not very secure because there's not much entropy. But because it's a, a haystack, nobody's going to know what your haystack is. So it's, it's an interesting test. Just kind of as proof, like if you don't want to use LastPass, this is a very secure way to do it. Now, this assuming one quadrillion guesses per second thing is like an offline NSA style attack. There's no way you'd get that many guesses on the website. The number on a website for attacks would be the site breaks before you even get like to guess any large number of combinations. The site would be expired. We're all going to be dead before, before they would get your password. All right. On to two-factor authentication. There are three factors of authentication. One is something you know, which is a password. The second one is something you have, like a phone. And another is something you are, like a retina scan or a fingerprint. Uh, you can enable uh, two-factor authentication, often referred to as 2FA, pretty easily. I think Security Pro has it enabled. And there's a plugin on the repo called Two-Factor. And you can use a number of things to get that second factor. Uh, Authy, it's a, there's an app on my iPhone. You probably can't really see it, but it comes up. It asks for a password, but it actually takes my fingerprint as well. And then there's a code that generates every 30 seconds. And that code expires after 30 seconds. And basically, you type in that second factor after you've put in your username and password. And what that does is, 
If somebody knows your password to your bank account, they type in your username, type in their password or your password, hit enter, it's going to say, okay, what's the second factor of authentication? They need to have your phone or they need to have your fingerprint or their, you know, your eyeball. Um, and so I have LastPass on my phone, which requires two-factor authentication. So when I pull up my LastPass account, I have to put in my 100-character password. And then it says, what's your two-factor? I have to close the LastPass app, open Authy, and it says, what's your fingerprint? I put in my fingerprint, and then it gives me that. So you have to, to hack through brute force one of my passwords with my phone, you have to have my fingerprint and my LastPass password to get the second factor through Authy. So it's extremely secure and a pain in the butt sometimes. <laughs> so about, I guess, five or four years ago, I started having all these users come to me with hacked websites. It was around the time that Tim Thumb vulnerability came out and a lot of themes were using Tim Thumb. And so I was getting like two, three, four, five sites a week from people whose sites were hacked. And I made a document basically of how I was repairing these hacks. It's more developer minded, but um, I decided I wrote it out into a booklet and I put it up on Amazon for 99 cents, free to Amazon uh, Prime subscribers. And it's called The Concise Guide to Securing WordPress and Repairing Hacks. It needs an update. There are some outdated things on there. But uh, if you're interested in looking at it, um, there's the Amazon link right there. But here are some few, some few things about the securing WordPress part that I wanted to talk about. You can move your wp-config file outside of the web root. So when you install WordPress, it's all in one directory, right? The web directory has wp-admin, wp-content, wp-includes, and then a w, bunch of wp-php files. One of those php files is wp-config.php. If you move that file one directory out, outside of the web root, WordPress still reads it. But it makes it a little bit harder for hackers who get into your system to see that file and to get your database credentials. The number one thing I found to be probably most effective is turning off file editing in WordPress. You know when you go to appearance and there's editor or plugins and there's editor those allow you to edit a theme or a plugin. If I get access to your site, I can go to Plugin Editor and add a line of code to download anything I want to your site and basically take it over. I could change all your passwords with a line of code because of that editor. It's not insecure per se if you have secure passwords or there's no other way for them to get access to your site. But I found that that's one really quick and easy step. You stick that line of code in that wp-config file towards the end. There's a little comment that says add stuff here, stop adding stuff here. And that will protect you from those sorts of attacks. Along with that, deactivating any plugins that allow PHP to uh, code execution. There was a popular one being used called, I think it was called PHP Exec, and it would allow you to run PHP from a widget. So you'd have a little widget in your sidebar, and you'd want, you know, you'd do your open PHP command, and then write a PHP code. And then it would output whatever you wanted it output. And it was a pretty good hack. There's some of these that allow you to do it in post content. Those codes are another way for hackers to inject malicious code into your site. If they get access to your admin, they can edit that post or that widget and put PHP code that automatically downloads their file to them. So uh, deactivating plugins that allow that. 
But also, delete any plugins and themes that you're not using on your site. Um, when, if, if you have ever developed on a website and um, somebody's asked you for help but they don't have their FTP credentials and they haven't a lot disallowed file editing yet, sometimes you can go in there and make some changes to the code of a plugin that they need help with. It's somewhat risky because if there's a typo in your changes, you can bring down the site, which is why FTP is, or SFTP is more important. But more importantly is if there's any deactivated plugins, other, in other words, plugins that you're not going to notice aren't doing anything on your site because they're not doing anything on your site. So if they're deactivated but they're still on your site, I'm going to go into the editor, I'm going to edit that plugin, and I can change whatever I want, and it's not going to take down your site even if I have a typo, because I'm going to browse directly to that plugin file and it's going to give me an error. If it doesn't give me an error and it runs properly, great. But if I fat fingered something and there is an error, all I need to do is go back into WordPress and edit it because it's not an active plugin. So delete any plugins and themes that are not active on your site. Another thing you can do is enable SSL on your site everywhere, but at least for logins. Uh, there's another piece of code here on the bottom that you can add to your wp-config. Define force SSL admin equals true. Basically what that does is at least when you go to WP admin it will redirect automatically to the HTTPS version of your site if you have SSL installed. Um, the reason why this is important and it's usually important for people who do a lot of work at like Starbucks. You go to Starbucks and you're doing work for your client and you log in in the admin. Well, I just happen to be at Starbucks too because it's not a very secure Wi-Fi environment. And I'm running a packet sniffer. And I immediately get your username and password for that site because it's not logged in through SSL. SSL encrypts the body of the, in, the output in the output going both ways, really, uh, of the connection. So you fill out a form, username and password, it's a form, and sending a post data, that body is encrypted to the site with SSL. Without SSL, it's plain text. So even though you see those black dots in the password field, it's sending that as plain text. If you're at Starbucks and you log in, I see plain text coming through if you're not using SSL. Okay, well I just got WP admin. Oh, you didn't disable the file editor. Great, I'm just going to add my code right now, download a payload of malicious code, and I've taken over your site. And there are hackers who can automate this stuff, so it happens you know, within seconds of you logging into a WordPress site. All of a sudden, something's wrong, you don't know why. I recommend uh, SSLs.com. It's uh, the place I used to get all my SSL certificates, or it was the place I was using all, to get all my SSL certificates, they're fairly cheap. You can get a rapid SSL cert for $5 or $6, something like that. Um, buy it for, I think if that's if you pay for three years, then it's like $15. Um, Let's Encrypt is something fairly new, and it requires your host to support it, but they're free SSL certificates. Now you can go for the really fancy dancy SSL certs that cost $300. They don't protect you any more than the $5 ones. The, they're just considered more trusted because the companies vet the person claiming. So if I go, like, in other words, I could get an SSL cert for Google.com and spend $5 to do it. But if I wanted a $300 really super trusted one that gives you the green bar instead of the purple bar or whatever it is, um, then they're going to call me and say, prove to me that you work for Google. And I'll be like, well, I can't really do that. And they're like, well, we're not going to give you the SSL cert. But for basic security, both SSL certs, all, every version of the SSL cert will protect you the same way. Um, I was talking to Liquid Web out there, and they are actually, I believe, introducing a hosting 
solution that will enable Let's Encrypt. But their basic one that they offer now comes with a free SSL cert for any domain that you have, I believe. Don't quote me, I'm not a salesman. Um, who does? Dreamhost. Let's Encrypt? Okay. I just started using Let's Encrypt on my site. It's really cool that the certs, it's still in beta, but the certs expire every six months, and there's a command that you have to run to renew them. It's fairly easy, and you can automate it. I assume Dreamhost automates it. Um, SiteGround? Okay, great. Perfect. So, look, free SSL certs, easy way to protect you, and then you can work in Starbucks and not worry about someone like me breaking your site. Yes? L-E-T-S, encrypt. Like, hey everybody, let's encrypt. <laughs> and let's encrypt is backed by like really big companies like the EFF and Google because they want everyone to use SSL, or actually TLS, so the NSA will stop spying on us all the time. So this is a quote from the, a support rep that works at iThemes. Hackers aren't just targeting specific sites like Ashley Madison. You've all heard the Ashley Madison hack recently. Instead, they write software that tries to find any weak site and compromise it. They can use that attack other, you, they can use that to attack other sites or to make money off ads or by spoofing other sites. They attack everyone, and that's true. A lot of people and a lot of your clients will say, why do I need this XYZ security? Nobody's gonna wanna hack me. And the answer is, you're right, they don't wanna hack you, they wanna hack your site. Because by hacking your site, they can send out thousands of spam messages that hopefully somebody will click on a link and infect their computer with something that will lock down their computer and require one Bitcoin, which is $400, to decrypt all their files. Um, or just Viagra ads on your site. And these malicious codes are pretty smart. They will track like, oh, this person logged in to WP Admin, so don't show them the ads. And then you're gonna get your customer say, hey, I went to your site and this Viagra ad popped up. And, yeah? On that note, um, they can be specific to your zip code or area code or zone of your state or city. They can tailor it to your block sometimes to where you or your customers might not see it. If you sell it like a general store in a neighborhood, but everybody else will. Right. So you're going to go to your site and you'll be like, I'm not seeing any Viagra ads. There must be something wrong with your computer. And you're going to forget about it. But they're just, they, they know. This is, this is how hackers evolved in the past 20 years. Let's break crap. Yay, we broke crap. Hey, wait, we can make money. Let's make money. Yay, we're making money. Oh, but they're blocking us because we're making money. Well, let's not show them that we're making money. And that's where it's evolved. It becomes very difficult for you to see the hack because they hide the hack from your eyes because they see that you logged in with your IP or your admin username. And they're like, okay, they log that IP and says, don't show the hack to these people. And your site looks perfectly normal to you. So you can use that example for your clients when they ask, why are you charging me $100 for this service? So it's easy to make it hard on them. And that's really the goal of this talk. It's not really if you get attacked, but rather how you prevent it from being successful. And again, that's to choose a quality host, use quality and trusted software from trusted sources, manage your usernames and passwords smartly, and enable two-factor authentication. Those are really the four basic things you can do right now that take almost no work and will help mitigate any of your clients from getting attacked. Are there any questions? Yes? Um, for just the files? I 
Yeah. Yeah. I usually just change them both. But, but do, you, do you do the constant additions? Oh, um, if you have those set to HTTPS, it should automatically uh, do HTTPS. Another thing, too, is if you're working with a server admin or probably um, any of the number of WordPress hosts out there, there's a way to say, redirect all non-HTTPS traffic to HTTPS. So that's what I do on my servers. Anything that's going to port 80 HTTP, redirect to HTTPS. And you can, you can have it so it actually preserves the URL they're going to, so nothing breaks along the way. Um, but I believe if you change that to HTTPS in the settings, it'll just, instead of doing the WP admin thing, Yes. What is it? WP Force SSL. Okay. Yeah, and I think there's another one that does something similar. Yeah. Right. You need to have SSL installed, otherwise you're going to get a bunch of weird errors because they're not going to know what you're, what you're trying to pull up on your website. Yes. Three quick questions. Sure. What is the sponsor list? <laughs> um, I don't purchase things from Code Canyon. Um, what about things like uh, plugins like WordFence? WordFence is a pretty good security plugin. Yeah, it's obviously a competitor to iThemes, but they do some good stuff. Um, and there's another security one. I can't remember the name of it, though. But WordFence is a pretty good one. All-in-one WP security. All-in-one WP security, yeah. And there's some other security plugins that aren't as robust as those three. Um, there's some that, like, they limit login attempts. So if somebody's trying to brute force you, they'll lock, you, lock that person out. Um, after like five failed attempts, and those, those were pretty. Yeah, WordFence that adds that. I think security does, and I'm sure all in one security does. Uh, the last question is: you said turn off the, the file editing. Yes. So you would just go edit a different way then. You just go directly to your job. Right. So the safest and most secure way to edit is through SFTP, which is secure FTP. Uh, it's not really an aspect of website security, although I guess it is because it has to do with your website, but similarly, if you're at Starbucks and you're FTPing in to your client's website, I automatically have access to your FTP username and password because FTP is not encrypted at all. All I need to do is sniff the packets and see the username come through and the password come through and I've hacked your site. Uh, most hosts offer, they'll say SSH or SCP or SFTP to connect, and that is an encrypted protocol. So the password is encrypted through transit, and the files are encrypted through transit. So nobody can see what you're sending. Yes? It's not really going to get you anything as far as security. It might prevent some brute force attacks. Um, I, I don't use it. I find it to be more of a pain than anything. Most of the time I can't even read those things. I, or I have to hit the refresh button until I get one that I can. Um, you, it's, it's give or take. It'll probably add a little bit of security, but I don't think it's enough to make that much of a difference. Yes. That's a tough one because SSL is really the server component. Um, I'm not sure. It'll probably. I I hope that it would be a standard recommendation if it's not already considered a standard recommendation. Google wants the world to be on SSL because of security. I mean, every security expert wants the world to be on a cell because of security. Um, I'm by no means new to websites already, but I am to WordPress. Uh, 
what we call the great shooting on half of some of it. Uh, over 100 websites went down to 3.0. Okay. I'm a WordPress person, and my question is do they have anything, plugin or anything else, that you can disguise the names of your image files without going hardcore code? Like to rename them? Yeah, yeah. because it's kind of, you know. I don't know of any plugins that does that. Um, I think it would be fairly easy to hook into WordPress with some code, write a plugin to do that, to just rename the files. Um, do you know, what are you thinking would be a security benefit to doing that? If they know the name of a folder, they really know what door to bang on the chicken is going to get inside. I mean, yeah, the this folder structure in WordPress is pretty standard, though. So, yeah, you can you can actually you can set up your Apache or Nginx to disallow any access to any subfolders except for web requests. Yeah. Yeah, I think security has some stuff right now that will rename I think security. It will rename WP content, I believe. Um, I th don't know if it does WP admin. I think they might be removing that because ultimately that's security through obscurity, which doesn't really give you any security. Because if you think about it, your theme lives in WP dash content slash theme slash whatever slash your files. Well, it's the source code in the HTML source code is going to be referring to that. So if you change the name of WP content to Lou Loves Security, all I do is right click view source and I see, oh, the style sheet's in Lou Loves Security slash theme slash theme name slash whatever. So it took me one extra second to figure out your folder structure. Right click's enabled. It's always enabled. You, you disable it with JavaScript, I've already found a way to get around it. Alt, view source. Yes? Renaming the database? Like the, the table name? Yeah, when you, when you start a WordPress install, um, you should rename the, da the database from WP underscore to something else. Um, and I think security, as probably the other security plugins do, probably have but I know I think security does, has a way to rename a database that it is currently running. But always back up before you do it. Yes? You didn't uh, mention when you mentioned uh, password safe, uh, key pass. Key pass, yes, that's another uh, popular one. I've never used it. I've never used one password. I've only ever used LastPass. Yes? Well, there's not usually a, I mean, there's not a WordPress log that tells you that you were hacked. Um, basically, it's knowing the symptoms. You get enough people that say, hey, I'm seeing Viagra spam or whatever. Yeah, it's, I was gonna, it depends on what the hack is. And uh, sometimes Google will alert you. Um, and their webmasters tool is pretty good about doing that. Sometimes, like, I had a site that was old and unused and I forgot about it. And then I got a notice from one of my virtual service providers. And um, they said, hey, we're blocking your IP because it's been hacked. And I said, I, I, that site's still up? <laughs> and I went and looked and sure enough it was hacked. And I just shut down the server and deleted it because I wasn't even using the site anymore. But it was a very old version of WordPress. It had a security hole in it that had been long known, and they found the site. Um, so the host will let you know if they know in most cases, 
but sometimes they won't know because they don't know if you're intending to show Viagra spam. <laughs> yes, so Securi has a has a plugin that does malware scan. WordFence, WordFence does. I think Security does. Backup Buddy even includes a Security malware scan. Um, Security also offers a hack repair service. So I think it's like thirty dollars a month or something like that. I don't really know. I don't use it. But if your site is hacked, you contact them. They'll go and clean up your site and put it back to the way it should be automatically for you. Security. S U C U R I. Yes. Yes. Yep. So in the WCLI talk, um, he showed us a if you if you use the WCLI, which not all hosts will have, but is pretty easy to install if you have shell access. Um, you can run WP core space verify dash checksum and it will tell you any core files that have changed that won't necessarily be true for plugin files though um, so if a hacker hacked a plugin then you still might not know but it is a good way to see if any of the core files have changed yes Right, yeah, if, you're, if you've been hacked long enough that Google notices, then it'll take a little while to get back. Um, but there's not really much you can do about it. If you don't know, you don't know, you know. I believe it's S-U-C-U-R-I dot net, I think. Or com, I don't know. Google it. Any other questions? I think we're running out of time. Three minutes? Yes. I don't do any side work, um, but if you send me an email, we can probably, I can give you some tips if you have any questions, or I can at least let you know somebody who can work on it for you. Anything else? And the link to your slides are? On WordCamp, Atlanta's website. <laughs> Okay, they're gonna put them on Slack. They're gonna put the thing on Slack. They told us they were gonna put our slides up on the site. So, um, in fact, I can put the link to the published version on Slack. Thank you. See, look, this is LastPass. It's asking for my. Second factor authentication. Any other questions while I'm doing this? No. Is there a work camp in Jacksonville? Yeah. Uh, so my 3 p.m. talk. Go Lou. So that should get you there. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. I hope you learned something. <laughs>